Okay, we are live. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to A Harbor's Day of the Dead celebration. I have Paulina here joining us from Tennessee and Jess, our building manager, and we're going to talk all things Day of the Dead. I'll tell you, I was down in Ecuador and I was so excited to be there for two days of the dead and seeing the cemeteries all lit up with lights and candles and big meals. And it was such a, such a, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. And when I think of Day of the Dead, I don't know if it has anything to, to do with All Souls Day, which I always had off of school when I was a, went to Catholic school uh, years ago, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, a tie in with that, but uh, you're the expert, Paulina, so we're, I'm gonna let you uh, talk and um, I'm gonna be off for just a few minutes, but I'll be popping right back on. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. Um, we're so happy to have Paulina here today when she gave me a call about this exhibit. Um, we said, obviously, we would love to feature it at the Crest and the Egg Harbor Library. Um, I've learned so much about Day of the Dead uh, just through working on this presentation with you. So I'm really excited to um, have the rest of Door County learn more. Uh, this will be recorded and it'll be available on our YouTube um, channel and also on the Door County Library's YouTube channel. Um, those of you who are watching from Facebook, um, feel free to pop questions in the comment box um, or put them in the chat if you're on Zoom. Um, and then I'll be happy to ask them to Pauline at the end or if it's appropriate during the presentation, I'll um, ask those then too. So with that, um, I'm gonna give it away to Paulina who is the co-owner of Nikasa Dora County. Um, a janitorial and event services company uh, in Dora County that serves the all up and down the peninsula. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to get your PowerPoint up here to. Thank you, Jazz. Well, um, first of all, a special and huge shout out to the Crest Pavilion and the Egg Harbor branch of Dora County Library. Uh, thank you guys for opening up your doors to this event. Uh, secondary Director of Photography, Ms. Kelly Avenson, uh, Hair and Makeup uh, Director, Joel Polson, Show Coordinator, Ms. Chelsea Lippman, um, Mexican Journalist, Ricardo Loranca for providing us with the narrative. And uh, especially important to our beneficiary for this event, the non-for-profit Help of Dirt County. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So this first side, you can see in here, uh, young me and my brother. So believe it or not, this costume was supposed to be for me, Snow White. And my brother insisted on being a skeleton for uh, Halloween that year. As you may know, Halloween is a global celebration as of today. Um, but in addition to that, in Mexico, growing up, starting elementary school, we do um, celebrate Day of the Dead. We have contests in school where the um, teachers promote uh, the making of altars. We also make calaveritas, which if we translate that into English, they are rhymes. If I were to make a rhyme about me right now, um, obviously honoring Day of the Death. It will be something, um, just because I'm in the janitorial industry, it'll be something like, there was Paulina sweeping and cleaning, making beds when the Katrina came over and said, your time to for death is here. So basically we make these little rhymes growing up. We also work with papel mache, which are crafts uh, that we do with paper and scissors. And uh, this first slide basically give us an introduction of who I am, uh, born and raised in beautiful San Jose del Cabo, Mexico. This will be in the peninsula of uh, Mexico. And uh, it's a tourist destination, but it is also my hometown. So um, Paulina, do you, so you're dressed in a Halloween costume here. Is it, you know, does your, does your culture celebrate Halloween more or Day of the Dead or kind of how do they tie in? What's more important? 
Thank you for that question. Yes, actually, this costume was handmade by my mother. And believe it or not, it's uh, Snow White. I was obsessed with Snow White. And yes, as explained before, I believe that everybody... Um, culturally celebrates Halloween. Um, but I think in Mexico, we do have uh, this special inclination towards the celebration of Day of the Dead. So little kids in elementary school, they are um, encouraged and we do participate in the creation of altars. Usually the winner of these contests, um, the group that wins, you can get extra points in school. Um, we also, our teachers, they're generous teachers like any other teacher, um, but they give us skull candy, which are skulls made out of sugar. They're mainly for decoration, but some people do like to like lick on them. They're kind of good, but it's a lot of sugar. Um, and then of course we do our arts and crafts, which involve uh, the cutting of papel mache. And also we make skulls with um, peanuts. So we paint the peanuts in white and then we create the skeleton. So I would say that in Mexico, uh, both celebrations are important. However, Day of the Death does have a little bit more of built in just because there are more elements of this celebration. So this next slide illustrates uh, the Mexican journalist. We decided to collaborate for the narrative of this exhibit. His name is Ricardo Loranca. He uh, comes out of Puebla and he's been helping us creating alternative content over the past two months. His first assignment was this one. And in the words of Ricardo, he describes our celebration as a colorful, mystical, Mexican, and now celebrated globally, Day of the Dead. Day of the Death makes us feel highly alive to those of us who are still in this living world. The full text of this narrative will be available with you, Jessica, at the Crest. And um, it was important to bring uh, Ricardo into the exhibit because he contributes to our celebration in Mexico, however, portrayed here in the United States. And he says that his celebrations um accompanied by mole and hot chocolate. So that's a pretty big. Yes, the mole and hot chocolate, very important. Mole and hot chocolate are actually winter foods in Mexico. So mole is uh, usually chicken or you can make it out of pork. And the way we make mole is with chocolate, of course, and then we also add our own spices and it warms up your body. So we have to remember that Day of the Dead begins on the midnight of November 1st and it goes all the way until the afternoon of November 2nd. So while these people are celebrating, they're also the live us, we are hungry, and it has become a tradition to eat mole and uh, hot chocolate. However, tamales are also part of our uh, dishes for the celebration, churros, and any other uh, food that can keep our body warm. Beautiful picture right here with the master of altar creation, Mr. Eugenio Reyes. He He's uh, one of my personal uh, heroes, if you want to say it. He is originally from Huacachula, Mexico. Uh, Huacachula, Puebla in Mexico, I am sorry. Uh, Puebla is located in the south of Mexico. And in this picture, we can see smiley, vibrant, humble, and very talented Mr. Eugenio Reyes with his wife, myself, and another friend, Mr. Martin. And we are here visiting his personal home where every year he creates these beautiful altars. Mr. Eugenio Reyes uses different elements in his altar. And I will go ahead and explain those. It's a little, it's a little bit long list, but uh, it's important to tackle them. In the first element of this altar, we can see earth, which is represented by the crop. The soul is fed by the various earthly aromas. Placing fruit or favorite family dishes on the altar provides nourishment for the beloved souls. Wind is represented by a moving object. Paper mache is commonly utilized to represent the echoes of the wind. Water is placed in a container for the soul to quench its thirst after the long awaited journey to the altar. Water is also used for the means of purification. Fire is represented by a wax candle. 
each lit candle represents a loving soul and an extra one is placed for the forgotten soul. Copal, which is incense, it's burned to commemorate the pre-Columbian history. The Sempasuchil, or in English, marigold, known as the flower of the dead, blossoms in the Valley of Mexico during the months of October and November with a bright yellow color and and is central to altar decorating. The flower aids the spirits to wander back to us. Pictures are widely used in honor of the individual you are paying homage uh, to or the person you are remembering on this special celebration. The skull is the common symbol of the holiday. It is the skull which is celebrated and represented by decorative masks called calacas or skeletons. In addition, sugar skulls are also tastefully created and inscribed with the names of both the honored and living recipients on the foreheads as a means to remind us of our own mortality. So this altar, it's important to pay attention to the details that are added because these details come way before our colonization times. Our culture started, our culture for death celebration started pre-Columbian times, which means that our ancestors, including Aztecs, Mayans, Olmecas, Toltecas, and all of these different civilizations that made up Mexico, celebrated um, and used these elements in their celebrations. Mr. Eugenio Reyes has been invited internationally to recreate these altars in places like France, England, Germany, and I had the opportunity to visit his personal home. He fed me mole, he fed me chocolate, and he also took me um, into the cemetery to visit his family. In the next slide, um, you can see a picture of me being uh, really happy in the Sempasuchil fields. So here you can see the space that was already taken by the banditors. Um, but for me, this picture symbolizes that I was there. You know, I had a great time. I was able to revisit my own roots and at the same time I was welcomed. So the message of Mr. Eugenio Reyes really knocks on my heart and it's basically an invitation to share our culture with others. Thank you. So then would you say, so tell me more about the candles at the bottom. So those are for like people who don't yeah. have an altar. Who do you typically build an altar for? So altars can be defined too as legacy, correct? Usually uh, the grandkids, the children of a person that has passed away will honor them and commemorate them through these altars. Now, Mr. Eugenio Reyes is a very brilliant and a humble person and the candles represent the forgotten souls. So who are the people in this world that are forgotten? People that disappear, people that die in war, uh, people that just don't necessarily had a proper uh, cemetery burial, correct? So in here, we can also think about um, people that just didn't had, you know, a family. So just because they don't have an altar, that doesn't mean that they are not welcome in the altar of uh, Mr. Reyes. So he's using these candles to symbolize the forgotten souls. Well, and then I think that it was cool when you told me about the bowls of water where the souls get to drink, like they're yeah. really thirsty from their journey. Yes, um, I think it's important to understand that for in, in our culture, there are different, there are seven different stages that can um get you to rest in peace. In for Day of the Dead, it's not only where you go and uh, you pass away, you die, and there's your burial and that's it. For us, it's more than that. For us, it's a journey of seven different stages that you are traveling to finally rest in peace, correct? These journeys can be tiring. So we use water in a container which represents the purification of these journeys, but it also helps them to quench their thirst as traveling souls, correct? So water is used, of course, as purification, but also um, as a symbol of the thirst that um, we go through in all of these stages after we are done with our journey on earth. Well, and then you talked about how like this 
portion. I mean, they're like, there are little kids clothes here in this altar. So you think it would be like a child that maybe that he's honoring, right? And then it's like the, uh, it's ascending to up to the, you know, one of the stages. Yes, you are a brilliant woman, Jessica. That is correct. <laughs> This particular altar, most likely Mr. Eugenio Reyes was paying tribute to a baby that passed away. And the way that the, the little or as much as I could learn from Mr. Eugenio was that people in Huacachula reach him out and say, please commemorate um, my mom or in this particular case, my son. So in here, you can really see how Mr. Eugenio did the different layers of the altar which symbolize the different layers of the infra world, correct? At the very top, that's where you are able to rest in peace. So at the very top is the, the main picture of the person we are honoring, but these clothes here at the bottom, they symbolize, for example, this child that passed away, he can recognize his clothes and say, this altar is for me. My family is waiting for me here and I recognize these items. So when we are creating altars, given another example, for example, me, when I went to school, a very popular person to um, do altars to was Frida Kahlo. And Frida Kahlo is a character that we can all um, resonate with because she is so popular. So with, when we would put an altar with Frida Kahlo, we would definitely put like rebosos, which are an iconic item of her costumes. We would put in there the flowers she would wear in her hair. We would put in there her paintings. We will put in there her family, her cholos quinkles, which were the pets that she used to have. All of these items can be um, easily recognized by the soul of Frida, who was once here with us, but now is in, in the other side. And I, I really don't think she's lonely or lost because she's missed by so many. Um, but in addition to Frida, other characters that were also paid tribute to are Emiliano Zapata, Francisco Villa, different revolutionary characters of our history um, that were also icons to us. So I wonder, just like, how long um, does he, does Mr. Reyes spend on this altar? I mean, does he, is it all month or? See, I didn't ask him about the length of this creation, but the only thing I can assure you is that his grandkids and his kids take off any time possible to go and help him. So he is not building these altars alone. Like I shared before, he is a very generous person and he likes to get people involved. So I was once a stranger on his uh, door and he said, welcome, let me show you what I have. So I did see a full house of family members. I do believe he gets a, a lot of help um, from his relatives and obviously his neighbors. And then this, so like the practice of David Zed, is more of a, you know, it's a cultural thing versus like a, a religious thing. It's very interesting that you mentioned that because we need to remember the origin of my country, correct? Previous to colonization, we had already our culture established. We had from agriculture to rituals, to hierarchy powers, to fashion designs and we were pretty established, correct? Um, after we were colonized, most of the churches that we see in Mexico, previous to them being churches, they were temples of sacred praying for our natives, right? For our ancestors, for all these Aztecs, Mayans, different um, communities that were living in there or civilizations, I should call them. Um, so once we were colonized, these rituals or these elements do become religious, but only because behind that face of religion, it's our our ancestor gods, our our the, the, the gods that we were worshiping before this colonization. And the narrative that Ricardo um, created for us, he does describe that, right? He describes day of the death, previous uh, colonization, post-colonization and obviously in in the modern world which uh, one of my favorite movies of course I will bring it up it's definitely Coco because it, it in that movie it shows you how the power of Day of the Dead is still alive even on mainstream media even in millennial times we are still seeing people going back to the root because it's a legacy 
Okay. It's something that I know my grandkids will put an altar on my behalf, or at least I hope that I'm going to write it on my will. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but it's important to remember that um, time passes, culture does not. So that is the main uh, strength that I would leave as a message for today. Okay, great. So um, I don't know if I've disclosed this in the past. I went to school for communication. This was in Puebla, Mexico. And on the left picture, we can see a uh, young me uh, dressed as La Catrina. And it's important to understand who is La Catrina, correct? And uh, I've seen it in some shows here in the United States that sometimes it's referred as the lady of the death. Well, it's kind of like that for us. La Catrina is usually the woman uh, that's beautiful and elegant and a temporal, and she lures you into death. So when I took this picture, I told my friend, this is something that La Catrina would do. She would invite you to drink sugary drinks uh, so that you can join her in the infra world. So this one in this picture on the left, I'm trying to portray who La Catrina is, correct? La Catrina is the death, of course. Uh, and death, believe it or not, is always flirting with you. So you have to make the right decisions. You have to, to plan your life accordingly so that you are not seduced by the easy ways of living. Um, on the picture on the right, like I shared with you guys before, these contests uh, for Day of the Death are repetitive from elementary school all the way to college. And my team and I decided to uh, commemorate or to make our uh, contest, which was the Leaving Statues Contest, for it to be La Catrina. We were honoring her and we dressed her up in different Mexican costumes. And... Um, that's basically uh, this this show over here, just portraying again the um, the ongoing celebration of Day of the Death. So I didn't ask you this before, but um, so like La Catrina, she's the female like angel of death, but then the skeleton, like, is he trying to lure male inclined? You know, is he trying to be seductive? To well, as well. I don't think so. I <laughs> okay, he's just scary. <laughs> yes, the skeleton is is just the masculine representation of this celebration. Cool. So she wants you to. So Katrina wants you to be naughty, be gluttonous, <laughs> be gluttonous, and drink so much Coca Cola you get sick. Right, and you can join with her in the infra world, and then but you can do. But it's fun. It's fun with her. So. I guess, I guess that's her trick. Be careful, Jessica. <laughs> that's the <laughs> trick to make you into believe it's fun. Yeah. Um, so great. This brings us to our final um, slide of this uh, brief presentation. And basically I wanted to um, summer up this exhibit with the importance of Mexican American culture, correct? I obviously was born and raised in Mexico. However, I most of my adult life I have spent it here in the United States. And for me, having the honor to share these pieces of information with you and your audience, and obviously the visitors of the Crest, is to remind everyone of the legacy that uh, we have as a culture and the legacy that knows no borders. It doesn't know languages. It just knows uh, the person that's carrying it. So it's important for us to take a moment and uh, honor those who have taught us the good, who have uh, mentored us, who have guided us. And also it's important to take a look at our personal life. Are we going to be in someone's altars? Are we going to be remembered in the future? I sure hope so. But if you want that, you have to be an honorable person in the living world. This picture, of course, I have a uh, hair and makeup artist, Joelle Paulson, in my house. She took on the challenge to recreate the makeup of La Catrina. And uh, closing down these uh, beautiful words I'm sharing with all you right now is uh, to remind everyone that this exhibit uh, will be available for in donation purchase and a percentage of the pr proceeds that we collect will be given to help of Door County in honor of the domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is October. And it's important also to remember that if at any point anybody feels like they're unsafe, you know, 
call on Millie Gonzalez, call on her team, and they are they will be there for you bilingually. Um, thank you, Jess. I don't know if you have any questions. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so um, this is on exhibit here um, at the Crest until the 15th. As you can see, there's beautiful black and white photos all shot in Sturgeon Bay. Um, so definitely check them out. Uh, while we're here, does anyone have any questions for Gabby? Janine, did you have any questions? No, I'm, I'm good. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's such a, a great cultural holiday that I'm glad Paulina got to join us today to talk about it. Yes, thank you both ladies so much for this space and this time that you have put into this exhibit to bring it alive. And uh, I hope this is not the last time that uh, we bring a little bit of our culture to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And again, um, you can check out the exhibit at the Crest until the 15th. Um, I'm just really excited because I feel like Day of the Dead, like for me, um, wasn't really as widely known even just four or five years ago. Um, I'd heard of it and just kind of seen the like candy skulls, but didn't really know the significance of it. And I feel like kind of the takeaway is like death is like is celebrated. It's not something to be necessarily scared of. It's like, I feel like you're really lucky to have grown up with, you know, not being afraid to, you know, not being fearful of, of death sort of, you know? Yes, exactly. It's even even to die, you have to die with honor. So, so it's important to uh, keep those values in mind. Correct. Every action has a reaction, and I think it's important to take time to slow down to create this altar to become ritualistic a little bit. And obviously, again, just remember the legacy that we have been given by our ancestors by our families whether you're Mexican or not there's definitely someone that influenced your life and uh, you need to thank you too well thank you again and thanks everyone for joining us today um, the crest we're open so you know just wear your mask and come on down and check it out thanks thank everyone you. for joining us bye now goodbye <laughs>